Mr. Depp, I'd like to now turn to your relationship with Ms. Hurd. Um, can you please tell the jury how you met Ms. Hurd? Mm -hmm. um, 2000, in, in around 2008, uh, Hunter Thompson and I were going through some of his manuscripts uh, of his books that have been published and then I, I found this manuscript in one of his boxes and it was called The Rum Diary and I had heard about it and I knew it was what they called his long lost novel, in fact the only novel he ever wrote. Um, and I showed it to him and Hunter was, Hunter was shocked. Oh my God, that's where it is, you know. <laughs> and uh, so he said, read me some. So I started reading this to him and he said, this is a movie, you know. We, we, we must produce this together. And, you know, he got all excited about the, the idea of doing that. So we went right into it. And we started to um, set up meetings to, uh, to get, to, to, to get money uh, financing to develop the project. And uh, we finally ended up getting the money to develop the project and to make the film. Um, Hunter, um, uh, from his own um, dilemmas in his, in his life, um, uh, committed suicide um, and uh, but I having had long long talks with him I knew every angle of the book but I knew every angle of the film that he wanted which was going to be a bit different than the book and Bruce Robinson who was a great writer director directed a film called with nail and i and how to get ahead in advertising was the one director that hunter and i talked about and so i i i went to bruce who was a friend of mine and i ripped him out of retirement because he never wanted to direct another film again i pulled him out of retirement after 27 years and uh, he agreed to write the screenplay and direct the film and uh, we proceeded. Uh, during the auditioning process, um, Bruce, Bruce was, uh, for that Hunter, Hunter had very specific ideas of what these characters should be. Um, Bruce had been auditioning um, girls or women from, for, for the role of Ch uh, Chenault in the film. And there were the there were this sort of the starlets that that were up and coming, and or there were some that were well known and um, things of that nature. But you know, one of the things that Hunter was very against was stunt casting. That is to say, put a bunch of very famous people in a movie and well, let them go. And, and then hope for the money in the, in the end. So Bruce had asked me, he said he had been auditioning uh, this, this one particular actress named Amber Heard. Um, he said that he'd auditioned her five times and he was, um, He wasn't sure about her capabilities um, as an actress with regard to the film and the character and what and taking direction and that sort of thing. So he asked me if I would read with her for the for the film, and I had met already met a number of actresses and things. And, I, and so what I said to Mr. Robinson is I said, Bruce, I, I, I don't, if you've, if you've auditioned her five times, you've seen 
the best and the worst, I suppose. So me putting her, this, this girl in an uncomfortable situation, you know, saying, hey, all right, let's read this. I think is a, I think it's a, I think it's a far better idea that we just meet so that I can s see how she behaves, um, see how she reacts, because that's really all it is: reaction, behavior, and you don't have to push anything else, you know. Um, so I, they made a, an appointment. Uh, she she came to my office. I took one look at her and I thought, yep, yeah, that's 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 the Chenault that Hunter wants. That's the one. I just I thought, yeah, she could definitely kill me. That's uh, that's what Hunter wants. And so we spoke, and she was sweet as pie, pleasant. Again, you know, um, intelligent, literate, very good taste. Uh, um, and I felt like if she, what I felt and what I told Bruce was, look, when you put, some, when you put someone in a situation that, that, that they're obviously going to be, feel under pressure, um, it's not the best way to, to really to really know what they're capable of. And I made suggestions such as, um, and which I ended up making to Ms. Hurd, I made suggestions of films that might give her uh, uh, some insight into what, what we were looking for in terms of the film. Which is to say, I gave her films like to have and have not, um, and things of that nature, be, 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 because I, I wanted to, it was something very important that she, I thought, felt she needed to know about stillness, as opposed to, you know, uh, going broad or, or, or taking, acting a little too much. So I felt like I could, I felt like I could be a bit of a traffic cop in that sense, so that, because if we, if we could connect, then it would, it could work as long as there was truth in her eyes, and as long as there was truth coming out of her uh, uh, dialogue, you know, then it's all in the editing. So I, I, I felt that I could help her with that idea of stillness. Um, and so, so that's where I, that's when I first met Ms. Hurd. How would you describe your interactions with Ms. Hurd when you worked together on The Rum Diary? Um, initially, well, yeah, no, mostly very, very, very few interactions. Um, I remember there was a time, I wasn't working that day, but I was producing, you know, one of the producers of the film, <clears throat> and um, it was a scene from the book that, that was, it was a, it was a, it was a scene where Ms. Hurd's character was in a nightclub, and were amongst um, the locals, and she's very drunk, and everybody's very drunk, and she ends up dancing with a few of the local, like one of the local guys and stuff, and then the other local guys start to sort of close in on her. In the book and in the screenplay, as it was written, there was a, a she, there was a, required, a, a requirement for nudity um, for the part. And uh, I was on set the day that they were shooting that. And I, as, I, as I was watching the 
crowd coming in on her, I realized, you know what? Because I would check on Ms. Hurd and say, are you all right? Are you sure you're okay? Because this is, you know, she was like, no, no, I'm fine, fine, fine. But I realized that with the crowd surging in towards her, that we didn't have to do, we wouldn't have to do the nudity. Because if she, if she took, took her shirt off and she had uh, a red bra on um, and a skirt, then if she had a red bra in her hand, when the crowd surged in on her, all she had to do was lift the red bra up out of the crowd and there's no nudity, but it's certainly implied because then she disappears for, the character disappears for a few days and, um, and she's quite a wreck when she comes back because bad things have happened to her. So I, I remember telling Ms. Hurd, hey, you don't, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to take your clothes off. You don't have to take your top off. You don't have to, everything's cool. Um, and she was appreciative. Um, and, uh, but, but, but other than that, we didn't really um, have much interaction until, um, until there was a, um, a scene where I, I was t I'm, I'm taking a shower and then she comes into the room and she walks, opens the shower and we kiss. And uh, that moment was, um, It was, um, yeah, it, 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 it was, it was, it, it felt like something, um, it felt like something that I shouldn't be feeling because she had her wife, um, and even though it was a scene, and, and, and she had her wife, and, and I had. Vanessa and kitties and um, yeah. When would you say your romantic relationship with Miss Hurt actually began, if if not in that moment? Well, I think there was something in the kiss, in the shower, 